Hello and welcome to the Total Mental Performance Podcast, the one and only mindset podcast dedicated to helping fitness entrepreneurs and coaches master their mindset, giving you insider access to industry leaders around their psychology, their campfire stories, and the mindset required to be successful in this business. I'm your host, Kieran O'Neill, mental performance coach and founder of Total Mental Performance, the world's fastest growing specialist mindset service dedicated to the fitness industry. So without further ado, let's lean in and listen. Yes, yes, team. Welcome to another episode of the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Today, I have one of our special TMP Evolution clients, Sasha Bai. Sasha is the founder of The Coaching Club. And I've personally been working with Sasha over the last four months, and it's been incredibly inspiring to see her growth, to see her journey. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun today. She's got lots of wisdom to share. Sasha, welcome to the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Thank you very much. Very excited to be here. We have fun. So let's jump right in. What is it that you do? Just describe your coaching, how it works, uh, how long you've been in coaching, and just give uh, our listeners some background on you and you as a coach. Okay, so we'll go right back to begin. I was a personal trainer from the age of 19. I did 10 years of personal training, loved it, but always knew I was capable of more. Uh, when lockdown and all COVID and everything hit, I was like, hmm maybe this is my opportunity. So I kind of was winging it from March till about October. And then I decided to hire a mentor. And from that moment is where I got into coaching and created the coaching club. The coaching club is an online space for women who are driven, ambitious, and know that they are also capable of more to come in and to work on themselves as a whole. So we are a holistic online program. I help women with their nutrition, their movement, their life coping strategies, their kind of stress coping tools, all things right the way from structure and organization right up to having more fun in their life. So we literally take the individual look at areas where they need a bit of kind of development, a bit of help and support, and we help them through that journey. So it's women of any age. Um, I'm not fussy about that, but it's certain characteristic traits that I will work with. And the reason for that is because I know I can get them absolutely fucking incredible results. Love that. Absolutely love that. So what got you into coaching? So is in personal training or is in coaching in 2020? Both. So personal training, I was actually, I had a place at Manchester University to become a mental health nurse. I have a sister who's a nurse and a mum who's a carer. And I kind of was just by default going down that route of going into nursing. But I knew I've always had a passion for why we do what we do, mental health and all the things to do with the kind of mind. So that's why I decided to do uh, mental health nursing took a bit of a gap year and in that time I was working as a lifeguard and at the leisure center that I was working at they did aerobics classes and I was like "Hmm." at the time I was taking loads of drugs and drinking lots and smoking and stuff and I thought I'll go and give one of those a go absolutely loved it because it was a bit like a dancey thing and I used to love to go raving and dancing and woke up the next morning I remember being laying in bed and I was like fuck I can't move I love this feeling (laughs) so um from that moment onward I went into my little lifeguarding um job and I was like please 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 can you train me up to be a personal trainer and so they did so they put me through all my level two or three and I've got a job and then they were like oh by the way we don't actually have a space for a personal trainer here so you're gonna have to go elsewhere so I had to go to the big local town which was so scary but got a job at Bannertines and the rest is history so that's personal training and then coaching was I've always had this underlying, like personal training is great. And I love connecting with people. I love working with people in that way, but I knew there was more. I knew that Sasha had more to give and COVID kind of forced me into it. And then hiring a mentor obviously was the way to, like that gave me a way to do it. Um, And then as we've evolved and as we've grown, it's now gone from just a fat loss program, which it kind of was in the beginning to what it is now, which is like at least a six month term uh, self-development program. I love that. And I think as coaches, we build programs for the younger selves that we wish we had. Sounds like you've done an absolutely great job and seeing your evolution over the last four months, seeing that become even more holistic as you're learning, as you're growing, as you're adapting, it's incredible to see. Um, just paint a picture. So I think we originally, well, we did. We originally met at the HPC event uh, up in Glasgow. And then you got in touch and you raised your hand. 
So just paint a picture before you got started on the evolution program. What was going on in your mindset? What was going on in your life? And what made you realize, actually, maybe I should do some of this work? Again, I think we need to go a bit further back. Um, I started with uh, Phil Graham in October 2020, and I was in a good place. I just knew that my business needed to change. I was in a happy relationship. We had a full bedroom house together, two dogs, um, was living like a fairly average life. You know, everything was fine. And one of the guys inside Authority Network said that they were having therapy and it was great for expanding awareness and all stuff like this. And I was like, hmm, like... I went through a bit of trauma when I was younger and maybe there are ways that that is playing out in my now. So I want to have a look into that. So I started with a previous therapist and it was good. It, it expanded my awareness. And what I did find was that a lot of the time I'd go into the session and come out feeling. And that was a consistent thing for months and for months. So I was going through the therapy um, with the previous guy and then, came to the HPC event in January. And I can't remember exactly what it was that you said, but you were talking about, um, I think it was maybe an ex of yours and how you just weren't on the same page. Like on paper, she should have been perfect for you, but there was just something there. And I sat there and I was like, I'm meant to hear this today. And I couldn't, like, I think everyone else went for lunch and I was like, I need to go and speak to this guy. And you said to me at that moment, I need to ask you one question you've got to answer me honestly are you happy? And I was like, oh, but James is a really nice guy. <laughs> You're like, that's not what I asked. And from that moment, I knew you would give me what I needed and, and, and guide me to the place that I needed to be rather than just be led down this year long, like years and years and years is what some people have therapy for and don't really get anywhere. And obviously me being driven, ambitious, entrepreneurial, I fucking want to get places. So before coming to you, I felt trapped. I'd felt um, like I was coasting in life. Like I wasn't really, like I was doing okay things. And to anyone else who averages the norm and they're okay with that, they would have been like, you're doing great. You know, you've doubled your business in the last year. You know, everything's okay. But it was more about how I felt on the inside. So there was a lot of overwhelm, a lot of pushing myself to the level of burnout, um, a lot of people pleasing second guessing myself and really kind of giving a shit about what other people thought of me and therefore I was adapting myself in order to fit in so yeah that's where I was <laughs> there's so many points in there one that you made was quite interesting is the difference between therapy and mental performance therapy has its place you need sometimes if you're not in a performance phase sometimes you need that you know, the, the, I wouldn't be alive without therapy. But if you're particularly driven and ambitious, typically what we see is coaches, particularly, and the ambitious ones, they get frustrated. Like they said, they sometimes come away feeling worse and not necessarily with an endpoint or not a clear next step or an outcome. That's because therapy and, and mental performance are two different things. Therapy is getting you from crisis to slipping to stable. Mental performance is getting you either from crisis or slipping to stable, to thriving, to limitless potential. And I think that's a really interesting point because people often think we're a therapy company, but we're not, we're a performance company. And I think that's kind of where you really took like a duck to water because you're like, oh, okay, well, I can actually practically do some stuff. What would you say the key difference is for you that you noticed? Okay, so session one with you, we went and grabbed the ball by the horns and went straight into the kind of, I suppose, the elephant in the room that had never really been, I've had multiple therapists in the past, and we'd never really gone into the trauma of my childhood, which was my dad leaving. And you and I, session one, we went in there. <laughs> and it was going into that moment. And again, the way that you do the sessions with me, is something I've never experienced before and it's blown my mind and even the techniques that we've used since has just blown my mind because we are and this might not obviously be right but my kind of um, interpretation of it is we're going into my mind revisiting those memories and then kind of putting a different spin on them seeing them from the light of a mature adult rather than the child who was traumatized 
So that's the difference is one, grabbing the bull by the horn, stop fucking about. And two, re, like reprogramming and, and, and putting a different spin on those, those situations. And as we said about a couple of weeks ago, instead of sympathizing with and understanding what I went through, through it's actually turning it into my fuel turn it in it into like being actually fucking grateful for those things that happened to or for me and yeah turning it into just a driving force behind I do what I do rule of thermodynamics is we cannot destroy energy merely transform it and I believe our minds and our bodies hold on to that energy as we go through life it changes and it adapts but it's never going to fully evolve so that inner child that young girl his dad had left was still hurting mm -hmm. and you've done a great job of containing that and using the external stuff to try and push through that but that core wound is always going to be there and it's going to come up again i'm still working on mine they still come up in lots of different ways but when you start to understand that you can transform that that can be such a game changer what would you say some of the formative moments that you realize now looking back were were manifesting in the overwhelm, the pressure, the stress, and, and all, of the, all of that. Mm. Feeling different. I've always felt mm. different. And I've always felt that that's not okay. And I have to change myself to fit in. Or... I'm not enough. I know that's a really, I think the whole thing of like, oh, I'm not enough is a bit overused these days. And I think it's a bit too broad, but I did always feel like because of the differences I felt, not only, you know, my dad not being present. So I had a single mum. Also, she was a lot older. So my mum had me when she was 38. So as a young kid looking at, you know, my mum, some of my friends' grandmas were the age of my mum. And I was like, this is fucking weird. And then my dad wasn't around. Mm -hmm. And then my siblings all had the same dad as well. And I had different. So there was a lot of Sasha feeling different. And she then thought, I either need to change to fit in or I need to strive to show off, to be my best in order to fit in. And it was the, the getting on the kind of treadmill of life of achieve, achieve, achieve. Like I completely wiped the floor with anyone in my family in regards to grades. Um, I've again, stepped out of my comfort zone so many times in regards to coming to the big, bold town to strive for a job and just so many different things that I wouldn't have done if it wasn't for the differences that I noticed from a young age and from the kind of, I think, pivotal moment of my dad leaving. So I think they're the two main things. And as you look back on that, you look at where you were, sometimes it can be a bit surreal and sometimes you can forget how much you've changed. I, I've, we've used um, the metaphor of the stock market quite a lot. And some days you're going to be up, some days you're going to be down, but generally as long as we're trending up. But something that was quite interesting, and I remember when we spoke about it, there was slight hesitation at first, but you came around to it, was you was in a place where from a business perspective, you're putting so much pressure on yourself from growth, from team, from structures and all of that. When actually you're in a place where there was some personal foundations that needed to shift. And it's something that I see a lot in coaches. They get caught up in the environments that they're in that are often very high pressure. They're there. They're literally there to push you to grow. But sometimes we're not in those positions where we're ready to grow yet. So just run, run us through what was happening in there and what the key shift is as you've rebuilt that momentum. Because it's been quite an interesting story in there. I think, and this is where self-awareness has to come in. Because there's often stuff going on that we're unaware of that then kind of drip feeds into other areas of life. So I know, for example, I've been really poor energy for up until about March time this year for the previous probably eight, nine months. And that's because I was in an environment that wasn't serving me. I was in a relationship that wasn't fulfilling me. But because I was wearing all the jackets of shoulds, you should be happy. You should be this. You should be that. I wasn't addressing 
I wasn't being authentic. I wasn't addressing those issues because I kind of was just pandering to what everybody else was saying. So I think, first of all, you need to be very aware and really tune in to your own needs and what it is that you want. And that was what got me to kind of start to recognize what was going on. And I am part of a mentorship group and also a coaching program. And in those groups, a lot of the driving force is money. For me, I want enough money to live. I've got a few things I want to tick off my bucket list and a few different things I want to achieve in life. But I'm not I'm not one for like just aimlessly striving. I think there needs to be a purpose and a reason behind it. And a term that someone said to me once was, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I took that as literal in regards to mm. if I have a five grand month, but then I drop down to three grand, I must be dying. Mm. You know, so instead of understanding that we are multifaceted humans, there are so many different elements of us that creates who we are as a whole. And I was growing significantly in many areas and dealing with a breakup a house move getting out of a mortgage and get like kind of um navigating around family and and societal norms and shoulds and all those annoying things so I was growing in so many fucking ways but I wasn't giving myself the appreciation or respect or self-compassion to give myself a pat on the back and to manage those expectations so I think it's very important that we kind of see ourselves as multifaceted, but in order to do that, we must have good self-awareness first. Absolutely. And hearing you play that back, it's just amazing because I remember holding up that mirror um, for, a, for a good part of that conversation. I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to, mm, I don't know if I'm ready to accept that. Mm, yeah, but what of this, what of that? And often it's just a passing comment that our mind can attach to. We're not even aware of that. And then all of a sudden we make a belief and that belief is, well, that's what it must be. So something like, uh, if you're not growing, you're dying. You applied that lens to a very narrow band of what your life is. We have so many different areas of, of life. We have our personal growth, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. We have uh, professional growth that could be skills that could be team that could be leadership that could be systems but revenue growth so that could be not just income but that could be profitability that could be cash reserves it could be being your financial system all of these different things marketing maturity as well there's like thousands of different metrics that you can measure growth in but everybody over rotates towards one and when they over rotate towards that and then also they start comparing that one area that they're over rotating on. You can kind of get stuck, get stuck on a number or you get stuck in one area. Maybe it's physique or whatever, whoever's listening to this. When you recognize that sometimes parts of your life has to slow down for you to facilitate the next phase of growth. And guess what? That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's really important. Otherwise, you're going to get pulled in the tides of all the people around you. Yeah, but I'm growing on this and I'm growing on this and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing that and I'm doing that. And you're not the king or the queen of your domain in that case. You're being pulled around by everything around you. And it's just taking that minute to take that step back, to analyze your thinking, analyze those limiting beliefs and have someone hold up a mirror. That's why I have two mindset coaches. They're holding up a mirror on me professionally and they're holding up a mirror on me personally we all have those blind spots sometimes we look in the mirror and we don't like what we see and from that point we have to make a decision do i carry on and reject that or do we make a change and you made some incredible changes and just play out now how slowing down to speed up how putting in these psychological foundations what has the output been because a lot of people look at this work and they think it's very blurry but if you could describe having done that, put in those foundations, how is life different for you now? How do you see the world differently? How do you turn up differently? I think, I, like, so a point I missed earlier is the self-applied pressure. And I think that somehow comes from the high achieving tendencies, but that is the thing, even now, still comes and bites me on the ass regularly. And I've had to ask myself the question, what am I putting myself under for? Like, what is it I feel like I need to do and really get clear on that? What is it? Because I basically will feel a bit of 
like tightness and restriction in my throat. And I thought originally it was anxiety, but it's not, it's pressure. And I think a lot of people who are listening to this being high achievers potentially will maybe feel the same. And I think it's really important to understand that you, you have to get clear on what it is that you're feeling. So I've spent a lot of time working with you, getting clear on really recognizing the emotions and the feelings and, and even to a degree, the thoughts around them. What that enabled me to do and adding in things like a queen day, um, kind of a bit more strategic to-do lists, like it's less of a list, it's more of a, a level of urgency list. Um, and just identifying what I actually do and don't need to to do where am I wasting time where am I wasting bandwidth as well and energy has enabled me to I feel like I've, I've completely slowed life down across the board instead of being this frantic you know like a dog chasing its tail I've gone put the brakes on get really fucking clear on every day what I need to do and when the purpose behind it can I delegate it can I get someone else to do it basically being a high up like a highly performing operator rather than someone who does everything and does it pretty shit so I now take a queen day which is it could be a Wednesday usually because I quite like that it's midway through the week and that will give me time to reflect to sit back if I want to do I know you might kill me for saying this but a little bit of work I will but it's in a different environment but basically just honoring my needs and allowing me to then be more potent in the delivery of when I am in so I'm very much more now I'm either in or I'm out in regards to work situation and my potency, my delivery, my coaching skills and everything has gone through the roof as a result. I am wake like so I've also gone through a lot of personal change, the breakup and everything like that. But I'm now in my own home that I absolutely adore. And every morning I open the curtains, I look outside and I'm just I will even say good morning Shrewsbury because that's where I'm from and I just have this overwhelming sense of gratitude which I've never felt before I will do things like like uh, rub my own chest or uh, give myself a hug in the morning basically repairing the relationship with myself which I think from the age of four when my dad walked out I blamed myself and that has been a big um uh, what was it called like that has been a big I, I suppose driving force if I hate myself but if I'm working and, and striving and high achieving then I can be validated from an external source if you like so I'm now learning to re kind of re um, re replenish that relationship with myself which is absolutely incredible and it enables me to be authentically me Sasha six months ago is not Sasha now because Sasha six months ago was wearing all the jackets of the shoulds from other people and the, the fear behind not allowing myself to be myself. Whereas now I walk down the street singing my heart out at the top of my voice to Becky Hill. I will dance whenever I want to. I will say what I need to say in whether that be in a personal aspect or a coaching delivery. And my standards, not only for myself in regards to how well I move my body, nourish my body and all those wonderful things, but also the people I allow into my life are levels that I have never been anywhere near before. So by taking a step back, by pulling back, it has, and also understanding myself more, it has enabled me to be absolutely operating from incredible places across the board. There's so much to unpack in that, Sasha. And you said uh, you said one word, which uh, I talk to the team about a lot, and I'm really happy that you said it, which is the word potency. Mm -hmm. Because everything that I want to associate CMP is with potency. Less equals more. So it's not just... I don't know, using a crude metaphor, there's a boxer who just throws a billion punches around. That used to be me with no power, a little bit of speed or being almost like that sniper. When you're in, you're in and you deliver a right hand and it's a big right hand. And what you've shown is that doesn't have to come at the cost of personal or financial growth. You've shown that actually, instead of operating tactically and just racing and rushing and putting pressure and trying to get as much done, slowing down speeding up has made you more potent it's made you more effective it's made you a lot more productive um, every single person that comes on board at tmp in the internal team they'll see within our values potency is a, is a big one it's creating as much change with as little as possible how can we ask as little possible as little questions as possible that generate the most amount of change so 
that's um those two are really really interesting things and then uh there was an interesting moment in our in our last session where you talked about oh yeah i'm, I'm smiling down the street i'm singing i'm opening the door i'm happy in the mornings i'm really ha like happy with, with where i'm at and sometimes you forget just how much change you've made in such a short period of time. When I held up that mirror and I said, well, can I read out some of your notes from the beginning? It was such a big moment. Mm. That was, again, this is, I think, what us <laughs> entrepreneurial high achieving people are like. What's next? So, and also maybe, okay, we've, we've resolved that issue. Now let's go on to the next thing that's pissing me off. So when you went back and you read out some of the notes, it's where I was when we began. I feel stuck. I feel lost. I can't be myself. I'm so stressed. I'm getting irritated. At all. Like it took me right back. And I, I can't even really remember that girl. Bearing in mind, this is only in like March. And I go back to when you were reading it to me, I could feel like a lump coming into my throat. And I was like, fuck, I have changed so much. And I've been so courageous and like I, just this overwhelming sense of one gratitude for you to guide me there, but two fucking like pride in realizing that I've come so far. And just by taking a moment to pause and to look back and to actually have someone there to be raw and real with how I was actually feeling. Because if I look back now, I'm looking through different lenses. So I'll be like, ah, oh, it was wasn't too bad I just needed to move so by having you show me how shit it was and how crap I felt it was so overwhelming but also like it's really ignited this humble again gratitude I think again in myself to go fuck me Sash like you are doing incredibly well we've navigated out some really shit situations so have and honor this self-trust that you have and know that whatever comes up in the future you can get through it Love it. Absolutely love it. And that's why I said, we need to jump on this podcast. You've got so much to share. You've overcome so much in such a short space of time to really navigate that and getting back in the driving seat. And it goes to show that it doesn't matter where you are. Sometimes if you are feeling a bit lost, you are feeling a bit scared, you're feeling overwhelmed, you don't know what to do. You don't have to do this on your own. There might be a stubborn part of you. It certainly was for me. I didn't see a therapist months, like for months when I should have because I was too stubborn. And uh, it was only until I met Hazel, who was a former kickboxing world champion. I think, all right, she's done what I've done. I'll listen to her. And that was the only thing that made me really listen and, and, and do it. But I wish I raised my hand earlier, you know? So it goes to show that even if you are scared, if you are lost, if you are feeling overwhelmed, you are feeling like you don't know what to do. There, like, there are people out there that can help, but you've got to raise your hand and you've got to be brave. And you raise your hand, you're brave and you've done incredible. So a big well done uh, on everything that you've achieved I don't think you so you said you know um something about not doing it sooner and how like you wish you'd start sooner but for anyone who's listening to this who is a high achieving ambitious individual they are a business owner you cannot do it on your own to the potency and to the level that you can do it with a performance coach. It is as simple as that. You cannot fucking do it on your own. There is no way, no matter how many books I read, no matter how much journaling I did or whatever, I could not have got to this level here with a standard therapist or just by self-development. And if you, are, if you are what you say you are in regards to highly driven and all of that sort of stuff, you want to be performing from your absolute fucking best. There's only one way to do that, and that is overcoming your own hurdles and obstacles, which you won't have potentially the awareness and the visibility of your own blind spots. And that's where someone like you steps in. Wow. I need to get you. I need to, first of all, I need to build a sales team. And then second of all, I need to get you leading it. <laughs> <laughs> Just your ability to articulate that is so so brilliant. It's amazing. Have you got it recorded? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll save that for our training. Um, so, Sash, the big question. If you had total mental performance, how would you know? Total mental performance is about realising there is a glass ceiling above your head, but it is there to smash through. 
and you may have to surrender and take some time to pull back and sharpen the blade and get ready to go back through it with more potency or you might have to navigate a new way through it but total mental performance is about understanding it's not about can I get through it can I go to the next level it's figuring out the how and that isn't always about like driving forwards it's also about like you always say mastering mastering the art of surrender learning when to pull back in order to propel forwards and it's navigating your way through life in the best possible way that you can but not all about the go 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 it's also about the b b b and learning to pull back at times Sasha, absolutely loved it thank you so much for all the knowledge all the wisdom uh and i'm incredibly proud of you like the amount of difference that you've made the the, the just the woman that shows up today versus the one that I met was the one that I saw. But you might not have saw that yet. Or if you did, it was so far in the future. He was like, yeah, but it's, it's, it's going to be ages for me to get there. Sasha Fierce was what you, was the name that you had for that person. And to see you now showing up as that, it's just, uh, I'm just really happy to see. Really proud, really grateful. Um, and yeah, where can our... Um, where can our audience find you if they want to follow up or ask any questions or even just get some more of your content? Yeah, so um, Facebook and Instagram, Sasha Holly by or Instagram. I've got a business page as well, which is Coaching Club Worldwide, all one word. Amazing. Well, look, Sasha, thank you ever so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. We've got some absolute gold on the podcast today and uh, much appreciated. Thank you.